right, welcome back. Good morning if you're just joining us. So, Dr. Muduri, let me just loop you into that aspect where we were talking about the issue of parody, satire, as well as ridicule and criticism. How far does one determine, or how will we even determine, um, if this information is, is, is going against the law, if it's highlighted in that aspect of criticism, satire, or parody? I mean, um, like he said, um, the law allows for this. Even in um, intellectual property law, mm. when someone parodies your work and let's say they make use of it to have a commercial gain, they're allowed to do that. Mm. They're not seen to be copying your work. It's, it's allowed in our culture. It's part of how we critic and um, our, mm. our, opera, our parliamentarians and other people like that. So it's going to be a big interpretive issue. And, and, and as I said, it cannot be an imp interpretive issue in this in this instance, it needs to be very clear if, you, if you're outlawing things like that. Mm. Yeah, I don't think it's a way to go. Now, here's the thing, Victor, and especially mm. as programs manager for um, MCK, the problem is now you will find um, a lot of journalists in mm. fear uh, coming to work and not even being enthusiastic about going out mm. and getting information because what happens is that this is just now an extra thing for journalists to worry about given the punishment and fines that are already there. Mm. Your thoughts on this? We are criminalizing a profession. That's our worry. I mean, that we are making the journalism practice, a, I mean, a, a crime. Under the Media Council Act, they are already provided for fines if journalists go against the, the, the set rules. And the, the, the Code of Ethics or Practice of Journalism is included in our law, the second schedule of the Media Council Act. It provides for fines against a journalist and fines against a media house. Under the Kenyan Information and Command Amendment Act, again, it provides for one million, uh, one million shillings against a journalist, 20 million against a media house. Now, under defamation, again, we still have provision for fines. Mm -hmm. Under the, 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 the Books and Newspaper Act 1976, we still have fines against <laughs> journalists. Now, under this cyber, uh, computer and cyber, we have introduced other fines against journalists. Now, if this is a huge investment, the media is a huge investment, where it's creating employment, to do all, then we are criminalizing it. Mm. Universities are producing graduates every day. Government has. In, in four of our five public universities, we have a department of journalism, which government is funding. At the same time, it's criminalizing the profession. So where do these people go? So we, mu we must be clear that if, if we are criminalizing it, do we close down? Then what's the way, exactly? Because that's the way forward then for our, our, our industry. Yeah. Because there are already safeguards when a journalist or a media house makes a mistake. There are already provisions in our existing, the penal code, already there. Yes. The issues of false publication is already in our, in our penal code. Right. I mean, the issue of... Uh, uh, cyber crime and related is already. If you look at the the the, 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 the anti-terrorism act 2012, look at the national state intelligence act 2012, look at what the money laundering act. It contains most of these provisions that are being reintroduced. How far? To me, the bigger picture is we need to invest to help Kenyans understand how to use public. The act has been passed. How much money has been allocated now to educate Kenyans about it? So that then we don't, because how many people will we jail? Mm. The capacity of our jail, will we, will we be jailing everybody? Mm. How much are we spending on legal? If you look at most of our counties, our national government, how much is going to legal uh, litigation issues? in the matters that will have been dealt with. So why are we going that Then way? how can we, as the industry, protect ourselves? Because then again, you find a journalist um, will, will not go to work or will not do their best out of fear. So you will tend to shy away mm -hmm. or you will tend just to give bare minimum uh, uh, when it comes to your work because all of, uh, 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 because of all of this. Then you find if you are being fined, if you are being jailed, you can't even afford a proper lawyer. I see. And two, Thanks. It, it, it's still it's scaring people away. Yes. And why? That's why you see most of media houses now, now in addition to financial costs, have closed down investigative desks because you don't want to risk. Yeah. I mean, in one of the media houses I know has spent almost 170 million this year on litigation around investigative stories in in, in a closing industry. So mm. already that's a concern to us. So 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 there, there, there is need to rethink some of these things so that we allow journalists to do their work. But true, and, and this, uh, this uh, I mean, uh, a discussion we have even within a public uh, institution, that our government is behaving as if we are in the 1970s <laughs> where ICT has no imp impact. Mm. Most of these documents they're complaining about are purely leaks from the same same government. Most of the people who are posting, if you look at most of the posts they're targeting, are documents from government, are tender documents, are letters of awards. Are, so, 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 so there are very few people that will arrest using this law because most of these things are legitimate. So, Dr. Mazuri, what would you advertise? What would you advise? Victor and generally our industry on the way forward on this matter because like we've said you already have 
punishments and fines and other things that restrict journalists. Now we have to worry about this, which then goes on to, con to, to limit us and to make us shy away from doing our certain, uh, the best of our ability, out of fear. I think as researchers, we're going to continue doing our work to make sure that um, journalists are, are liberated, that they're made to feel safe in what they're doing. And what the, the immediate thing is actually, what I would want to encourage is actually be difficult to net people with these provisions because of the idea that it has to be intentional and things like that. Um, but the problem is the chilling effect. Mm. But still, uh, with the litigation that is going to follow this, I, I don't think this will be a big problem. Um, like um, Victor said, we have confidence in our courts and they're going to be able to correct this. Let's hope the, the, so. This, this um, act should uh, focus on its main work, which is really the work of the National Computer and Cyber Crimes Coordination Committee, helping us to collect data on um, cyber threats, helping to train um, people that are in charge of critical infrastructure on how to protect their systems and things like that. So the, uh, an example, for instance, Masinga Dam, which is, is the reservoir for five other dams, if it's computer operated, it can someone can flood the, the entire downstream and you see what happened in Solai Dam. And that, that is a big cyber threat to a, a national critical infrastructure. Look at things like um, NYS2 now, the scandal. Um, it is actually happening, the same thing has happened again because the audit uh, module of the system was not activated. That cannot happen twice. So this, uh, the committee is also meant to give guidance, set the minimum standards for security. All right. right. So we should focus on those main things that were the, the act was meant for and where it is good. And we'll talk about the core of it in just a moment. But yeah. um, Thomas, are there best practices that Kenyans can use on social media? And if they're there, what are they? Uh, definitely. And something I always tell people, and this is something, a, a, a saying that is common um, amongst most of our viewers, that security begins with you. Let's start with the basics. Honestly speaking, even with these laws, it would still be difficult to prosecute and even jail a hacker, an intelligent hacker. Because these days, we even have bots. Someone would, would launch a bot and sit back and wait for results. Right. How do you trace him? Right. Even um, our, our law enforcement um, agencies, I know, have not been trained enough. They need to be trained enough on how to, to, to follow some of, to pursue some of these cases. Mm -hmm. So even before we talk about these regulations, let us be responsible. Freedom comes with responsibility. Mm. There are people, Zinzi, whom if you go to their profile, you can literally predict what they are going to do the following day because they are fond <laughs> of you know, posting everything about their life, mm. how they woke up, what time they, what time they did, they how they beat traffic, where they went, how they worked, where okay. they traveled. that's okay, even said that's to fine. share what they had for lunch. I know, that's fine, and but... I'm not uh, asking you to stop, but this is a clarion call. If, if you post everything about your life, if ever anyone was interesting about pursuing you, they mm. know now Zizi has traveled. And so if I go back to her house, I can easily break in and mm. she'll not be around. Mm. In a nutshell, what I'm saying is, let us be responsible with what we, we, we post. Let us use simple reason. Reason to me may not be reason to you, but just be responsible. Know that once you click that enter button, you are not, you're not going to have control of what you've posted. Yeah, the internet people never can forgets. bully you, mm. and you cannot take everyone to court. How many people are, have, have been bullied online? Are you going to uh, take all those comments and you know, uh, pursue, uh, sue, sue those people? Dr. Mudiri, even as we are discussing um, this specific act, whether Kenyans understand it, and they're at the heart of it really, is um, the issue of freedom of speech and defining what fake news is. At the core of it, there are still some good positive highlights. Would you not say? Yes, that's, that's what I was saying, that um, the Act provides for a coordination committee that will now help us to really understand the scope of cybersecurity. So for me, for instance, you will have uh, reports about the money that has been lost um, in cybersecurity attacks and things like that. But usually it's by self-interested claims, so security companies and people who want to hype their business. We will have real statistics on what is actually going on. Hopefully we will. I don't know whether it's going to be <laughs> open so. to the public. But um, the idea is that we're going to have now strategies on how to um, defend ourselves on, as a nation and even individually, as Victor says, um, and the best practices will come from that. Then we will, from that, we will move to having other bigger conversations about substantive issues that here are only represented in piecemeal. What do we mean by bullying? Uh, where do we want it regulated? What do we mean by fake news? What do we mean by um, 
things like psycho and, um, psychographics. Mm. You saw the real Raila website, mm. right? You, mm. you saw the kind of hate speech that was spewing out of that. Mm. Who did that? So there's, there's, there's need for regulation, but as we've repeatedly over uh, emphasized, let's talk about how that regulation should look like. Okay, so and, Victor, and, I'll let you and, have the last and, say as we're up. Yes, there was a, a directorate of cybercrime. Actually, at the CID, there's a full directorate of cybercrime and, and the rest. And, and, and we just need to have, I mean, interrogate how far this has helped us. Uh, obviously, look at the anti-corruption uh, act. It's there, leadership. But what is happening at NYS, I mean, so is it lack of laws? So we also need to relook at how is it laws, I mean, that, that we lack to help us in dealing with some of these matters. As at the media, I mean, stakeholders in the spirit of the handshake, in the spirit <laughs> of the big four, we need to relook. There's no need for adversarial relationship. We need to, to have a dialogue over how best do we implement the bigger, the good aspect of this act, as you said, but the issues that are dealing with the media and freedom of expression are largely uh, uh, negative and they are going to uh, I mean, slow down the work of the media and we are worried. Thomas. Zinzi, in my parting shot, I would like to urge our viewers to be proactive rather than, rather than waiting to be reactive. It's very expensive to be reactive. May it be on an individual level or the companies. You have to invest on computer security mm. because it would be then too little too late once you've been hacked you can probably spend much more. And something has been uh, said on a light, a light note, though, that people these days love installing apps. And perhaps if we told people that their brain is an app, they would engage it more often. And that's a, on a lighter note, though. Because everything that comes up, we want to install on our phones, on our computers, then click next, 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 blah, blah, blah. Without but understanding yeah, the policies. Yeah. So we need to be responsible for whatever we do. All right. Yeah. Thank you so much, gentlemen. That is where we're going to close off the conversation. Thank you so much for coming in for your time and your expertise to really help Kenyans understand everything. All right. So we're going to take um, a very quick break here on Money Express. When we come back, we still have a lot more for you. And I will definitely be taking a look uh, at more of um, the results that we have. Have. If you're just joining us, we were asking you earlier, do you understand the Cyber Crime Act? Um, voting has been closed. So far, 269 of you voted. 19% um, of you say yes, and a whopping 81% of you say no. All right. So I hope that even after this conversation now, Kenyans have a better understanding of what is at stake here. We're taking a quick commercial break. We'll be right back. <laughs>